Good morning from Pocahomos. Here we are in my happy place and with a fresh new beard. Yes, this is called the happy husband cut. Yeah, when I cut this down, I have a much happier husband. It was time. It was time to cut that beard. It was getting a little crazy. And uh, so I thought I would talk about time today. Timing in your garden is a huge thing, and it's something that, that um, I'm always very aware of when I'm shopping for plants or placing plants in my garden. Uh, I'll often put a plant that has a later blooming time adjacent to a plant that has a, a sooner blooming time. So for example, these lupins, you can see that they're coming to the end of, of their cycle here. They've bloomed and all these seed pods are coming in the bottom here because the bees have been all over them. So they've all been germinated. And <clears throat> yes, there are some secondary secondary buds coming in now, which is great. Uh, haven't had that before because the plant hasn't been big enough to have the secondary buds. But, you know, in maybe three weeks, these will be completely done. And same with my columbine. You can see these columbine are almost as tall as I am. They're about, well, more than five and a half feet tall. And every day I come out here and I deadhead. Um, so these are the pods. The seed pods look like this. I've let this one grow because it's nice and big and I'll use it to grab seeds from. But as soon as they as soon as the flower starts to turn, I will deadhead my columbine right away. And the reason why I do that is because I hope to get more time out of them. So your plants will do one of two things. They'll either go to seed and try to produce as many seed pods so that they can spread throughout your garden because that's what they you know, instinctively do. Um, or you can deadhead them and hope that the plant will spend its energy making more flowers, which is what my uh, intention usually is in the garden. So I deadhead my columbine right away because I want more flowers. And the cool thing is that the way I've designed this garden is there are the plants like the lupins and the columbine that uh, are sort of the first ones to emerge in the garden, which is why I love them, because they, you know, remind you that spring is coming, and and I love that. But uh, when they start to die out, um, with you know these columbine, I've planted my honeysuckle right behind it, and so it's coming in to maturity. You can see the very first few buds are opening up and in about a week the whole back fence is going to be covered in honeysuckle so while I lament the loss of my lupins and my columbines um, there's a number of other plants that are coming into blooming right now and so that's the whole point is to design your garden so that as one thing goes out of bloom, something new is coming in. And, and then I have other plants, like this ridiculous bee balm here that I think is about five and a half feet tall now and, and growing. This will start to produce flowers sort of in, uh, oh, I don't know, in about a month and then it'll produce flowers for the whole summer. So part of designing your garden, of course, is designing how it looks, uh, using design principles like pattern and level changes to create relationships that will draw your eye in and make you look at different places in your garden. But it's also important to remember the timing of how things bloom and when things come out of dormancy and all of that. So I've got some yarrow here. 
I, I haven't seen this yarrow. I can see the blooms here, but I, I can't remember what color it is. And this is a new plant, and it looks like it's going to come into bloom at exactly the right time. So when this columbine is done, this will come into bloom here. And then a little bit later this summer, this is a, a perennial fuchsia, and it's one of the last things to bloom. And so it um, comes quite late in the summer, but also blooms right into the fall. And this is also a new plant here. It's just exquisite. These leaves are amazing, and it's got these hanging flowers. Um, I can't remember the name of this plant. I could, I could dig out the tag in the ground, but it doesn't matter. Um, but, it, you know, I planned this one well. So whenever I'm shopping for plants, I always take a look at the tag and see, you know, not just what kind of water and light it needs, but also when it blooms. <clears throat> and then you just have to kind of keep that in mind when you're designing your garden so that there's a constant turnover. Um, you wouldn't want to get plants that all bloom in the early springtime because then you would have sort of a, a dormant garden for the rest of the summer and that wouldn't be cool. Let's just have a look at this bee. He's just, he's getting some. Go on. Get in there. Yes. Yes. Get all of those. Get all of those. So there it is, timing. Um, timing is just part of life. I mean, Blake and I, we dated three times before it worked. The timing just wasn't right the first few times. So timing is life. And uh, thank you for giving me your time here on Poco Homos.